Okay. All right. So we're on page 59 of the um, workbook. Um, again, just realized it's, it's recording the, the answers and everything there on the screen. So when we're looking at uh, public true false here, so hotel revenues do not include interest and income. looking at revenues and they ask about hotel revenues, they're really asking about all revenues. So when it says they do not include interest income, is that true or false? It's false. What would make it true is if we just scratch out the word not. Uh, 59. Hotel revenues are realized when paid by the customer. False. False. What would make it true? When services are rendered. When services are rendered. Okay. Or when it is, aka, when it is earned. Okay. So number two is also false. Number three, a fiscal year is a consecutive, any consecutive 12 months. True. So, 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 so close. Remember, an unearned revenue receives a cash first, so it affected the cash balance, and then when you earned it, it shows up on the income statement. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I thought you meant to say. The other thing is, of course, what's the opposite of that? Sometimes we can collect the cash first, and then it hits net income, and sometimes it hits net income, and then we collect. So, in that case, it's accounts receivable. Question five, a ho uh, hotel income statement includes the operating results of its revenue centers, expenses of its support centers, energy costs, fixed costs, gains and losses from sales assets, and income tax expense. Now, we're looking at thinking of the income statement, so is number five true or false? It is true.
proprietorship and partnership have equity. Okay. All right. Number seven, dividends payable appear on the statement of retained earnings. False. False. What would make it true? Dividends declared. Good. Dividends declared. Okay. So be careful with that dividends thing. Did where does dividends payable show up? Balance sheet, what section? Liability, Liability section. Um, where would dividends paid show up? Not there, somewhere else. <laughs> Very good. Then not there, somewhere else. No. Did what? Advisor. 
alternative income statement is the the prior period amount for that line. Okay. Okay. And again, when you're looking at those. Here is the information for the next one, okay? It says, prepare an internal short-form income statement for Hotel Donaloo, Inc. The data is for the year ended September 30th, 20X9. Now, let me, let me reduce this down a little bit, see if we can get it all on the same page. There we go. All right, so we're trying to do internal short form. Now in your book, what page is that on? Internal short form. at page 197 that's the format that we're going to work on we're given this information here on the screen and we've got to put that into that format on that page so what's going to come first what group operated department okay so our list what are we going to include there and do, do we show it individually or do we show it grouped into a total number? So looking at operated departments, which ones will we show in that grouping of operated departments? Will we show rooms? Okay. Food beverage? Yes. What about vending machine commission? It would be grouped, but not individually. What about cash discounts earned? Grouped. Okay. Interest income? Grouped. All right. And then uh, rental of store space. Yes, but it is grouped with something, all right? So go ahead. So with the last two, I know that you have to include together, but is that just another type of income? Um, it is another type of income, but look at your internal statement there. There's going to be a little bit more than those last two. Well, other operating departments that could be included in there. Well, no, cash is individual items that are going to be shown at the top of this uh, income statement are rooms will be shown individually, food beverage will be shown individually, telecommunications will be shown individually, other operating departments will be shown individually. Okay. So everything under that is combined. You got it. So the vending machines, the cash discounts, the interest income, and the rental of the store space, all four of those get grouped into that last grouping of other. Okay. All right. So we 
taking care of all of those items above there. Okay. All right, so then what's our next grouping called? Undistributed expenses. So what is going to be included in undistributed expenses? A and G. utilities costs. So then we're going to get those next four items there. Okay. The trick here, trick here is that utility costs, they show it under other expenses, but that's actually going to go under this undistributed expenses area. Okay. Now, once we get to that portion and we're done with that, what is that next line item called? Income before fixed charges, and we simply just add up this grouping here, subtract it from the revenues above. Wait, you say under utilities and income before fixed charges? Or the, the, the utility costs are before the income before fixed charges. Oh, you get the back? So then what are, what are we going to include in our fixed charges? Uh, rent. rent. Okay, I heard depreciation and amortization. What else? Uh, you got it. What about those insurance and trust? You got it. Rent, property taxes, insurance, interest, depreciation, and amortization. Are any of those groups? So then at that point, we add up that grouping, subtract that from our income for fixed charges, and what is that number called? Income before income taxes and payments. Or Good. On sales and transfer. Good. Okay. All right. So then the only other thing that we've got left here are the income taxes and the gain. So does the gain or the income tax show up first? Gain shows up first. Now, in this particular case, it's a loss. Okay, so on your in your book, I think it is a gain of like what ten? Yeah, ten five. So in this particular case, it's a loss. So the loss will show up first. Then we get a new total called income before income tax, which then gives you a hint as to what's next. And then we subtract that to get net income. So this is what I'm trying to describe to you right here. So when you're running through this list that you had before, just keep in mind that this rental and other income, that's a group number right there. Everything else that was listed uh, there was shown individually. The other thing that was a little bit of a, they were trying to sort of throw you off a little bit, was the utility costs were listed down under the other expenses. Okay, so be careful with that one. Then they gave you uh, the income tax before the loss. Income tax is always last. Okay. Then you're asked to put together a retained earnings statement. Okay. So if we've got retained earnings, remember now dates mean something. So we are at September 30th of 20X9. Down under part two. Okay, we're given this additional information that we've got dividends declared for this year. Will we use that number for our retained earnings statement? Yes. Okay. Now, you know that when we make, 
take up tests and you know quizzes and whatnot, you know that we're going to try to throw something else in there, like uh, a dividends table and a dividends paid, right? So if we're talking about retained earnings statements, the dividends declared. Right? Then we've got the retained earnings at October 1 of 20X8. So do we use that number for our retained earnings statement? Okay, it is a fairly large gap, but think that number right there, that 351,478, that is the retained earnings balance at October 1 of 20X8. It's the beginning, right? It's the beginning balance for our retained earnings statement. So we start with the beginning balance of the 351,478. We add in that net income number that we just calculated. Okay. We then subtract out the dividends declared to get our new ending retained earnings balance. Again, on some level, this should be reviewed. Any questions on that one? Now remember, you've got your one page of notes. Okay? So you might want to give yourself a little column of an internal summary statement and maybe an external income statement. Okay. Um, actually what they were looking for is for you to put together the actual statement itself. They just gave you blank spaces. But we just we just talked it through. Now this income statement and retained earnings statement, this is posted with the answers. Okay. So at eleven thirty this will show up on the email. Oh, yeah. Um, right here, if you go to from the front page, uh, right here, Workbook Solutions. one that they're giving you is now we're looking at a detailed internal long form. Okay. So internal long form is on page 196. Okay. So now we've got net revenues, we've got cost of sales, we've got payroll and related, and then we've got other. Okay. So what do we start with? Well, actually, before you answer that question, what's different between the internal short form and the external long form? What's different? What are we getting more detail on? Oh, like the revenue, the cost of sales. Good. The revenue, the cost of sales, the payroll, the other for each one of the operating departments, and what else? Everything else is a 
essentially the same format, right? So if we take that information there and we throw it into a long form format, again, this income before fixed charges number, everything above that is gives you a whole lot more detail for each one of those departments. So now we're seeing the individual revenues from each department, individual cost of sale, payroll, and other, and we get a summary number out to the right. Then the same thing on undistributed expenses, we get more detail as to what payroll and other, okay? But anything, again, anything below the income before fixed charges, all of that is listed out the same. No change there. All right. Now, on an internal short form, if you had to convert this long form to a short form, what numbers would you see? under the operated departments. Mm -hmm. you gotta think about what you're seeing. Just blow right by it and don't really think about what you're looking at. Not helpful. So if we're on an internal short form, would we, we see, see that? would we see net revenues at the beginning or would we see the net income or losses Good, the net income or loss from each department, right? So we would basically be working down this far right column. Um, no, it's because of what we're going to use it for. Because it's internal short summary form, we're essentially just looking at this far right column. What if we're doing an external income statement? Flip over to your external income statement. Uh, I believe that was on the next. Yeah. Look at page 198. If we were putting together an external summarized statement, even though it's summarized, does it look exactly the same as a summarized internal? No, it doesn't, right? So if we're looking at an external summarized statement, would we start off with total net revenue or would we start off with the net income or loss from the operated departments? Good, right? So if we're sticking with internal, we would just simply take this right hand column and throw that out there exactly the same way, okay? If we're doing external, we would start with net revenues from the operating department, right? Then when we got down to the cost area and the expenses, then we would list room costs, wet food, beverage costs, telecommunications costs, other departments, other operating departments costs, other income, okay? Then we would list our administrative So if you want to track this, go back to those three pages that we're looking at. Was it 196, 197, 198? Right? Go back through and see if you can trace these numbers from the detailed internal to the summarized internal and to the, the summarized external. Okay? So you can get that straight in your head as to what is being reflected on each one of those statements. That'll help a lot. Any questions on that one? I promise I won't ask you to uh, do that. But here's the thing. I will ask you about where you will find stuff okay, on each, in each area. All right. The next one. Okay. Prepare a statement of retained earnings for Hotel Best Foods, Inc. 
data is for the year ended March 31, 20 X9. So again, we're talking about statement of routine earnings. So we need to start with, what's, actually let me back up and ask that question in a different way. What's the equation for a statement of retained earnings? Beginning retained earnings. Good. Plus or minus net income or subtract net loss. Minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. So what do we start with for beginning retained earnings? This retained earnings at April 1, 20X8, right? So this would have been the beginning of that 12-month period ended March 31. So we start with the retained earnings. One second. Do we have net income or loss? No. We've got to calculate it, right? Using good income for income taxes and income taxes. So if income before income taxes is 39.8, income taxes are 6,500. Do we have net income or loss? Income. Okay. Now, I know that's a really simple step. Wait, it would be a loss if you said negative, right? Correct. Okay, I was like, yes. Hey. Yeah. Because, yeah, I know that's a really simple thing to think about, but here's the deal. There are a lot of folks that's like, you get into that exam session, you got that pressure going on, you got the time limit going on, you know, all that kind of stuff, and Quite simply, you'll end up with something like a beginning retained earnings and you'll subtract net income or you'll add a net loss kind of situation. So step back from it, get a big picture view of it. If we've got income before income taxes of 39.8, we've got income taxes of 6,500, we've got a net income, so we add. Okay? All right? Then we take. 39,895 minus the 6540, and we're going to add the difference between the two. Okay. All right, and then we've got dividends paid and a dividend declared. Good, subtract the declared. And then I'm going to skip over the next one because it's that combined statement thing. So there's your answer. Subtract dividends declared. I just can't even say that. Enough. Somebody's going to do it. Bless you. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to subtract dividends paid, or somebody's going to subtract dividends paid of all. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. It's dividends declared. That we subtract from the retained earnings statement. Okay? And then you can see here, here's a combined statement of retained earnings and income statement. So okay. all you do is just take, you know, revenues minus expenses, minus the uh, loss, okay, minus the income tax, go ahead and calculate uh, the net income there. Are we going to need to know how to do that? The combined statement? Yeah, the bottom one is the combined one. But I just want you to see what they're doing there. Okay. All right. Next. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Don't want to give away the good stuff. All right. So the next one is a common size analysis. Okay. Okay. All right. So there. 
there's your information. All right. The description at the top says prepare a common size analysis from the following income statements. The rules for rounding are as follows. Show all answers to one decimal place rounded. So for example, if you get uh, 7,900 divided by 170,000, you put 4.6%. Take series of computed percentages, do not put to the computed total, force the largest number in the series up or down as necessary. And then C says net income is not to be forced up or down. Okay? So what they're saying is, again, use the totals for each of the groups, and then if you need to adjust to make sure that each group totals to that group total for your percentages, then adjust your individual items up here. It's easier when you see it. Okay. All right. So, let's start with the top. So, well, actually, let me back up for one second. Are we doing a vertical analysis with a common size or are we doing horizontal? doing vertical. So if we're doing vertical analysis, what is our divisor or our denominator? Good. Net sales or net revenue. So we're going to divide everything by 153. Okay? 153,000. Everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah. Be careful with that one because if you end up dividing everything by 154,000, all your percentages are going to be wrong. Wait, so you divide everything by everything on the list. Everything on the list. Well, and actually including above. Yes, ma'am. is going to give you some slightly odd looking numbers, okay? Because if you divide the 154,000 divided by 153,000, you're going to get something above 100%, right? Because you're going to end up with 100 actually 0.7%, okay? Which then means your allowances are 0.7, which then means that your net revenue number is the actual 100% number, okay? <coughs> um, well, if you take your, let me, let me bring up my calculator here. So if we, So if we take the 154,000 and we divide that by 153,000, see, we get 100.65, what, 65394? Okay. So remember, when we're converting this number to a percentage, we shift it two decimal places, so that would be 100.6535. So we would round up since the five sends the six into up is a seven. So we get one hundred point seven. Okay. Then if we take the thousand divided by the one fifty three, okay. Notice again we get when we shift it over or to convert it into a percentage, we shift it over two decimal places, we would end up with six five. So we're going to only round to one decimal place. Oh, that yeah, would five and above rounds it up, rounds that number up. I thought you yeah. said they just do it and put it right next to it. Um, you would show it as a positive percentage, but just know that you have to take the 100.7 minus the 0.7 to get to 100. Okay. So then everything else, we're simply going to take the 48,960 divided by one, the 153,000, the 104,040. Now, I 
don't want to bore you half to death by doing that. So <laughs> here's your answer. So if you're reading, so you ready? I'm going to read them out to you so you can write them down. You ready? So starting at the very top of the list, we've got 100.7. 0.7. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5
budgeting part still do, do it, and then when you look at how many is left, it's so we're going to budget for you know food uh, prep and all that. Same plan. Does thirty two percent sound pretty good? For your food costs. Thirty. Is thirty your max? I'm thinking 32 is pretty good. Okay. Excuse me. All right. Then you've got um, all of your operating expenses. So you can see that when we're doing the analysis and looking at the percentages for every dollar in net revenue, you are spending 33 cents on payroll. Spending 3.9 cents on payroll tax and employee benefits, 1.3 cents on china glassware and silver, 0.5 cents on kitchen fuel. You get the idea here? So then we can take these numbers, these individual numbers uh, for the percentages, and we can then compare those to last year. So let's say that maybe last year our percentage for cost of food sold was. 33%. Are we doing better or worse this year? Better. Because last year it was 33 cents per dollar. This year it's only 32 cents per dollar. So we're becoming more profitable on our main um, our main service of selling food. You get the idea here? Okay. Now, so then once we put it into percentage Format, then we can actually start comparing year after year. Other things that we compare against is budget. Okay, so if we're comparing against budget, if our budget was 30%, how are we doing for cost of food sales? Good or bad? If budget's 30 and our actual was 32, that's bad. We went over budget on our spending for cost of food sold. Okay? So again, when you're looking at the income statement, we've got to compare those percentages to the percent budget and then percent compared to last year. So even though last year was 33%, if this year's budget was 30, we improved, but we still didn't quite get to where we wanted to be. The idea. So each one of these items can be analyzed in that same way. So let's say that let's go to operating expenses for payroll. Let's say last year was um, thirty percent, but budget was thirty-five percent. How are we doing? Payroll currently is 33%. Last year was 30. Current year budget was 35. Good or bad? It is a trick question. Exactly. So if you compare it to last year, last year was 30. So we did have an increase in payroll but we still came in under budget of 35 percent. You get any idea here? Okay. So that's how we know whether or not we're doing well because then because when the absolute numbers change I mean that gives us an indication as to you know are the expenses going up in total but what it doesn't tell us is what is the relation to the amount of sales because here's the deal Let's say that last year net revenues were um, $125,000, right? So last year revenues, net revenues were $125,000. This year it's one hundred fifty-three. Okay? So if we just compare the dollar amount, we should see an increase in cost of sales from last year's sales of 125 to this year's sales of 153, right? Mm -hmm. 
that would be a natural increase because we just simply sold more. Okay? But what this common size analysis tells us is did we keep it within the percentage that was allotted? Right. Did we keep it in the budget? Exactly. But you get the idea? You can't just compare, bless you. You can't just compare dollars to dollars and go, yep, no, that was bad because we had an increase in cost of sales from last year. You can't do it. Okay? If we naturally had an increase in overall sales, then we're naturally going to have an increase in cost of sales. All right, so let's be back in here at 10.50.